Hi everyone, welcome to GKI Guiding Inda Sunday Youth Worship Service. Let us begin our service today by singing our first song, Come Holy Spirit, Descend on Us. The Lord be in our listening. The Lord be in our understanding. The Lord be in our efforts, in our works, to put this word of God into practice. Amen. Today's reading is taken from Matthew chapter 25 verses 1 through 13 Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom Five of them were foolish and five were wise When the foolish took their lamps they took no oil with them But they but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps As the bridegroom was delayed all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No. There will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. This is the word of God. Oftentimes our reading of the biblical text brings us to some sort of polarity. We are in a position to judge which one is good and which one is bad. 
which one is justified? Which action isn't justified? Which is, honestly speaking, a natural tendency of any human being. Because we have some sort of ethical calling that drives us to behave ethically. And when we speak about ethics, we speak about what is good and what is bad. What is true, what is not true. What is right, what is wrong. What is appropriate and what is inappropriate. So, oh, you know, pondering on these questions is, of course, one's natural proclivity. But the biblical text is actually richer than that. If we take a look at the text that we just read together, we, I think, can see that uh, so many people who also read this text are uh, tempted to uh, label the foolish women as uh, the unwise and also the the people who would who would uh, be damned by God in the uh, end of times in the on the judgment day right and many people also perceive this text to be speaking about the judgment day the final day where uh, all the sinners who do not repent uh, perish in hell and those who repent will go to heaven and this is a very common uh, interpretation common and popular interpretation of this passage but is this passage actually addressing the uh, end of times in a historical uh, sense we can argue about this but we need to do what we need to do is to look into the historical settings, the historical background. We need to know who uh, are the people addressed uh, by this text or by this narrative. This text is produced within a Matthean community from which emerged the letters or the texts uh, addressed to the people of Israel who were at the time in a diaspora, right? They were spread, you know, uh, and, and, and this community, this community resided in Syria. And in their exile, they struggled with the question of identity. They were not only suffering, but they, was, they were pondering on who they are because they were split down the middle. They do not know whether they are Jews they are unsure whether they are they are Christians or not. Do they deserve to be called Christians? Do they deserve to the Jewish identity, to having a Jewish identity? They were grappling with such difficult questions of identity. There was some sort of identity crisis happening over there. And in such a situation, when they were unsure if they deserve to be called Christians and at the same time they were uncertain about their Jewish identity they were pursued and hunted down by uh, the Jewish people because of their faith in Jesus because they follow Jesus they are in the middle of suffering. They are in a situation that is so burdensome, so troublesome for them. 
they do not know they cannot foresee any hope they cannot uh, see themselves being set free from that problematic situation not only problematic but they experience death nearing suffering my friends the call to become faithful in this passage is not the call to become faithful to God so that at the end of the day we can be saved by God and sent straight up to heaven. What is being conveyed by this text is faithfulness, the importance of faithfulness to any struggle for liberation. We are called by God not to sit back and watch things, you know, around us crumble down and we do not participate in the struggle for liberation. This text tells us, teaches us that our faithfulness to Jesus must be a faithfulness to the struggle for liberation, to the struggle for freedom, the freedom from oppression, the freedom from, from uh, discrimination, the freedom for, from any oppressive power that attempts to bring us down. Any oppressive power that subjugates us. And this is the freedom that this text or this narrative invites us to move towards, to aspire towards. In this contemporary time, we through this text are invited are persuaded by God to be allies of the marginalized we are called to befriend and to stand to walk with those who suffer we need to be faithful to our struggle to liberation we need to be uh, endurant in the whole process. And this is what God instructs us to do, to have endurance so that we can persevere until the time comes when suffering is no more. When the liberation of God materializes in its full sense, in its fullest uh, 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 manifestation. And we as children of God must fight for this moment. This is not talking about the second coming of Jesus. This is not talking about God uh, coming down to rapture uh, all of us, the believers, so that we can enter the heaven. No. What is addressed through this text is actually a historical crisis, which can also be seen today in many different contexts, in many different settings. And God wants us, God desires us to remain faithful to the struggle for liberation. May God enable each and every one of us to become faithful servants, faithful agents of liberation. God bless you all. My friends, if you'd like to give offerings to the church, you may do so by putting your offering in an envelope and keep it with you until the time we gather again in the church when the situation regarding this pandemic gets better. Or you may transfer it to GKI Gading in the 
bank account. Now, in closing our service today, I'd like to invite you to sing our closing song, Beauty for Brokenness. Beauty for brokenness, hope for despair Lord, in the suffering, this is our prayer Bread for the children, justice, joy, peace Sunrise to sunset, your kingdom increase Shelter for fragile lives, cure for their ills Work for the craftsmen, trade for their skills Land for the dispossessed, rights for the weak Voices to plead the cause of those who can't speak God of the poor Friend of the weak, give us compassion, we pray. Melt our cold hearts, the tears fall like rain. Come change our love from a spark to a flame. From cruel wars, havens from fear, cities for sanctuary, freedoms to share, peace to the killing fields, scorched earth to green, Christ for the bitterness, his cross for the pain, God of the poor, friend of Compassion, we pray. Melt our cold hearts, let tears fall like rain. Come change our love from a spark to a flame. Rest for the ravaged earth, oceans and streams. Plundered and poisoned, a future and dreams. Lord, in our madness, carelessness, greed, make us content with the things that we need. God of the poor, friend of the weak, give us compassion. Until the nations learn of your ways Seek your salvation and bring you their praise God of the poor, friend of the weak Give us compassion Change your love from a spark to a 
let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for speaking to us, for addressing us, for giving us the beauty of your word to live by. Please guide us in accordance with the word of God and in accordance with the will of God in living out our lives so that we can be doers, implementers of the word of God. Help us, guide us, bring us solace throughout the coming week so we could be at peace with ourselves and with other people. Please bless our mental health. Please bless souls that are separated from each other. May the spirit of remembrance remain in us so that we can remember the good things our loved ones ever did in have ever done in their lives thank you in the name of jesus we pray amen have a blessed sunday god bless you